Hi everyone. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. We're on to part. Hi, Oops, I got my volume up. <laughs> I'll just let everyone roll in here a little bit, give it a little few minutes, but I'm so glad you're here. And um, it is a bright sunny day here in the Pacific Northwest. I think I'm going to have to do something about these windows and maybe get some like curtains that you know, tension that I could put up just during my lives because it's pretty bright here. But um, I will work it out. Every week it's getting better and better for me. It's a lot easier, but it just takes time to get all those tweaks. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome, Jody. Thank you so much. You're here. That's awesome. She said she was going to try to come here today. I'm really stoked. Um, Jody Kincaid has beautiful beautiful ocean and landscape paintings she's amazing hi laura welcome back welcome back oh i'm excited you've been working on your version that's that's great i hope uh you'll share that um with us um you know i gotta find a way to share things in um and chat i know you can do links and stuff like that but um i hope that you'll post it on instagram or maybe even just email it to me and i'm at art Don, um, art at donvanderstoop.com. You can email it to me and share it with me and we can have a little chat about that. Hi, Jamie. Welcome. Welcome. I'm really excited that you guys are all participating in chat. I'm trying to figure out how to um, do a poll, but <laughs> I watched some videos on it and none of the settings for poll settings are, are here. So um, I'm going to have to figure that out because I thought it would be fun. Um, to ask you guys a few questions and you can say yay or nay and then I can have a poll on it. Um, so to get started, I'm thinking about showing you through my phone here. I'm gonna switch it to this other view. And what I do here is I'm gonna line it up. There's gonna be some reflection on here and that's okay, it's just to get the idea. So this is an iPhone, and if you go switch into the camera, you can switch it to like a black and white version. I always seem to kind of like the Nor. And let's see if I can get it here on screen for you and for it to focus. It'll take just a second. It was doing it before just fine. Oh, there we go. And then I'm gonna blow it up a hair. <laughs> I tried this earlier and it worked. I just let it, it wants to get that background. So let me get it on my hand. Come on camera. Well, there it goes, there it goes. So what I wanted to show you how I use my phone here that um, I will switch it to black and white and then I can evaluate my piece and go, okay, what are the values? What's going on here? And, um, you know, you can see I started putting the light in here and I've been debating, you know, just evaluating because I can always make changes. So I'm used to that. Uh, I can make changes here, but I'm gonna bring the light in over here and maybe behind the neck. And you can see how the light will carry your eye around. I do have a dot down here that's a little bit bright, but that's okay, I can take that out. But I was going to do a poll because I was going to see if you think I should take out this hair and make another oval, you know, another light source, or if you guys like where that's going. So that's what my poll was going to be about. But I just wanted to show you that phone trick because it really helps you see um, your values. And I think that's really important. I usually check that several times through my um, process and it's it's I do it all the time still so um, I'm just going to take us through here and finish this up to a spot where you know I I end up liking it and maybe you guys do too even more but it's really at that kind of three-quarter stage in my opinion so we could play around with that let's see who's here hi Dreamweaver early morning here in Australia Oh, you know, we, I put you on my huge TV. You look amazing. Thank you so much. You know, we, when I first went live, 
the last time um, my husband and I watched me on YouTube because we watch YouTube downstairs all the time. We had this huge TV <laughs> and, and I was like, wow, that's, that's big. <laughs> so it was fun though. It was fun. Hi, Paula. Welcome. I'm glad you liked the tip. Yeah, there is an app called Value Study. That's a really fun app. I just end up using it so much. I just want to pop into my black and white on my, on my phone. And a lot of time I just take a photo of it and I'll study it. So um, I will take a, a color photo of it and a black and white photo of it and then I'll study it overnight because it really, when you step away from it, can really show you a lot more than, than you can imagine. It's, it's crazy. I don't know what it is about the mind. I think you're just really too close to it um, when you're working on it for a couple hours. So I, I think it just really helps to stand back. And so let's see. Laura, I have crazy curly hair so I like it with the hair okay Laura likes it with the hair there's a vote to keep the hair um, hi Amber welcome welcome um, I'm at work and he watched uh, I wanted to say hi oh thank you Amber for saying hi um, I'm that's really sweet that you came in from work <laughs> that's awesome and you know I really love that you guys are watching the replay that really helps me out and um, I also wanted to say before I forget that I'm, I'm planning on doing this live thing for a while. I really am enjoying it, and, um, but I wanna build up my channel. And so if you guys think of it, definitely hit like on these videos. That really helps me out. I thought I would never say this. I was like, what are all these people that are always like, hit like, subscribe, all that. But I guess I'm turning into kind of a YouTuber here because I was like, Okay, I get it. So if you guys watch the replays, if you enjoy them, please definitely hit like. Um, it always is wonderful to get a comment. And even on this um, video today, even just commenting subscribe, like if you're a subscriber, that's a great idea or just saying hi or, or anything about the video would be awesome. So I'm um, building up my watch hours so then I can get, um, you get, I don't know if you guys know this, I didn't really know it, but you have to have a certain amount of watch hours to get to different levels. And the first level is I'll be able to have more interactive things in chat. We'll have um, things where people will be able to have memberships. It'll be all, all kinds of fun. So I'm really excited to get there. And you guys watching my replays sure, are, sure is helping me. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, done. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Peg. I love the finish. It's not finished yet. I'm, um, I'm glad you think it's finished. That's awesome. Um, I, I, I like, uh, this is about three quarters of the way for me. So, um, I, that's what I like about the dark paper is it's teaching me sometimes to realize I could be done. I, I really could be, but three quarters of the way in is usually where I'm really, um, amping up. <laughs> I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So let's see. Um, does it help if we watch it multiple times? You know, if it's on other accounts, you go through, watch all my videos, that would be very helpful. Multiple times, I, I would think it would do it, but um, any help is really supported. I, I just am so excited to be here and any support um, is, is filled with gratitude, seriously. So, and it also is really encouraging me to do more here. I um, was hesitant to come to YouTube. I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do. And um, I just want to connect with people more. This is so much more fun, you know? Oh, hey, Lori. Lori, you're on your regular account. I'm really excited. Lori Michaels is here. Welcome, Lori. And, um, but yeah, I wanted to say, I just really love connecting with everyone in this way. And I just feel like it's a collective of creative collective. I have my Facebook group uh, named after that too, but it's that collective energy that even if you're at your place and I'm here and say, you're not creating exactly what I'm doing here, but you're working on your own thing or you're here and our energy, I just feel like we're all all connected. So it's really fun to connect with other creatives this way or even people that are interested in um, watching this and um, it, it's just really fun. So I have a little story before I get started here. Lori Michaels, good friend. She's a beautiful, amazing artist, amazing friend. I've known her for over 25 years. Um, we met long time ago and she is the one that introduced me and got me to look at pan pastel she's always been that way when we first met she was making miniature teddy bears I have one of them over there I should show you guys one um, 
she taught me how to make, we met in a break room. She taught me how to make miniature teddy bears. That's how we met. And um, went, along our way, she just loves new things. And she's always been inspiring to me. And she's like, Dawn, you got to check out these pan pastels. And we were actually at the time playing around with encaustic. And I was like, this is, these are really cool. And I dove all the way in and she has two. She's all set up with pan pastel and soft pastel and, um, so she's been a great inspiration and an amazing friend. So thank you for being here, Lori. I'm stoked that you're here. And um, so yeah, I'm gonna um, get started here with a few things and see um, if we could just take this to the next level. And, and you'll be able to see from this spot, if you thought it was done, you'll be able to see it transition over to where I think it's done. And the biggest challenge I find with um, learning in pan pastel and soft pastel but pan pastel specifically on the dark paper for one on camera it's going to look a little brighter the other thing is is that when you're newer it's harder to really understand how many layers you want to do and it's layering is the key so lots of lots of layers is to really bring up those values because when you take it off the easel it won't be as bright and so just over time you just learn and um, so I'll always take it up a little bit more than I I think I want because of that so um, oh yes of course yeah thank you Lori thank you Lori <laughs> yeah she's an amazing if you guys check her out she's on Instagram and uh, she loves birds and paints and does all kinds of wildlife and she's an amazing artist. So, okay, so I'm gonna just go in here and I think I'm gonna probably take off a little bit of what I've done here because I want to bring this light like I showed you in the black and white at the beginning of the video. I wanna blend it in all the way over to here and I'm probably gonna see what it looks like bringing it between, behind the neck. So I don't think I have anyone saying I should get rid of the hair. I got a vote that says they like the hair so I, I think I'm just going to work around it and go with the, I don't, it's not that I don't like the hair. It's just sometimes I second guess myself. It, ask Lori. <laughs> Lori, do I second guess myself? Yeah, I might do that sometimes. Um, so I'm just going to go in and this is the orange extra dark. I mean, this is the orange shade. So I'm going to just bring that in here over this blue and I'm going to go. Okay, you love the hair too, Dreamweaver. All right, I'm glad you guys are liking it. Sometimes, see, this is the thing. This is a great example. When you do something different, it you can second guess it because you're not used to seeing it. So it's, it's really um, good to sit with something for a while because you just don't know how you're going to feel about it. And that's when, it, when I, I told a story in one of the earlier lives um, about me spraying off a piece. I sprayed the darn thing off and I, I would, did not like it and then after I sat with it for a few days and then I posted it on social media and I was like oh my gosh I can't believe I did that to that original and um, you really have to just sit with it for a while I think I'm even going to go around this at least I, I'm going to I'm going to it just shows you guys how you can make changes I'm just going to go over it because I want this to glow out to here just, and I've thought about bringing it over here, but I usually like my work to have a divider line, even if it's a little harsh. Oh, a geisha girl. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> oh, Genevieve. And, oh, that's cool. Hi, Genevieve. Welcome. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. That's an awesome surprise. Lori and Jen, Jen know each other love this community okay so i think i'm going to go down here and bring it even down here and then you're going to see i'm going to pull it just through down here a little bit and we'll just see what that looks like just going to balance this out and then i can shape it a little bit more I'm glad you're here, Genevieve. That's that's awesome. I, 
these lives are really fun to be able to bring people together that aren't normally chatting, you know? I'm like, it's just fun to be here and be able to chat with people. Okay. So you can see the difference there. And then I'm going to build this up a bit. Just right around here. And see, when you smooth something out a little bit darker, it gives something for it to hold on to and build against so you can have that contrast of if, if it's fluffy light, you know. So I'm instead of this being orange, I'm going to con... Well, maybe it's the light in the background and this one's just glowing and it's... I think I like that. Like this is the background and it's like a sunset. And this is the new, okay, I got another one. I think it was Amber, she popped in, Amber Skeeters. I think it was Amber Skeeters who did this. She commented in my, um, on my video um, for the live last one. And she said that she watched a video with Pan Pastel with Golden, because Golden has bought Pan Pastel quite a few months ago, I think almost a year ago. And um, she watched a video that um, they said that they're going to change some of the colors because to match what the actual pigments are that made them. And so the yellow ochre, they changed to yellow oxide because it's yellow oxide that they are using to make it the actual pigment. So they're getting, um, they're going all in and being pro with that and getting more specific and nailing down the color. So uh, I have one that I've bought that's in storage that says yellow, this one's yellow oxide and then I have a, um, a yellow, I mean this one's yellow ochre and then I have a yellow oxide in my drawer for storage and um, it uh, confused me and then I figured it out and I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> it just kind of, well, I wasn't prepared so I have all my classes that say like, um, that have the colors listed, you know, so I was a little bit like, okay, well, I had to go change them all. Let's see here. Hey, Patricia, welcome. Oh my gosh, I'm glad you showed up. That's, you guys are awesome. Great to see you, Patricia. Patricia, she's been doing a lot of my classes too. She's been doing an amazing job. I, I love seeing your work. I'm going to bring this down. So uh, yeah, I went back to, to using the pan pastels here a little bit because it helps me flush out a little bit of that light and bring some of this yellow in right here, a little bit more and a little bit of this yellow oxide to bring up the values. Thank you, Jody. I'm glad you love the light behind her hair. Yeah, I think that's gonna make this hair a little bit more, it'll make a little bit more sense, I guess. I At first, it was just not popping right, and now I'm really enjoying it. Thank you, Patricia. This is just a really exciting process just to break down a, a shape with structure like we talked about on, on Tuesday. So for part one, if you haven't watched part one, I explain everything in there, but um, it's just really showing you guys how to break down some, use a simple structure to break it down and abstract it out. It really helps bridging that gap between, oh, I want to go abstract, I want to practice abstract, but giving you enough structure where you don't feel lost and overwhelmed. You got you to gotta take baby steps. You can't leap ahead so quickly and expect to, um, to be able to do a full-on abstract right away. And my next class, I'm really, I'm getting really excited, you guys. I almost have the line art done, and it's going to have a lot of this vibe in it. So a lot more in depth, a lot more detail. These are, I'm considering these demos. So I, um, it's nice to get a peek in, but when I'm doing a class, you get all the details, like all the colors and a little bit more detail how I'm using it. 
So the, I'm using these lives to just really connect with people and, um, and also be able to inspire you and show you answer questions along the way. So it's been a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm liking that a lot better. Thank you, Jody. Yeah, I agree. I think it does give um, the, the dimension a lot more behind her. And um, I'm gonna put a little bit more of the yellow. I mean, this is the orange shade. You know, I'm gonna actually go, and this is what I've been doing. It kind of also shows you during these lives how I'm using my colors. You know, because I was telling you guys, if you buy the 20 um, set that's just the core colors, because Pan Pastel is structured. So if you watch the other videos, I do talk over that. Um, so this is the orange family, and this is the core color in orange. And those are pretty bright, but you, you can at least see in here, oh, I meant to go down here, up here. You can at least see in here how I'm using them and how much I'm going into a core color versus a shade. And I think that is really helpful and if you are trying to figure out how you want to purchase the, them if you're not buying the whole set. It, now, if I would have done this all over again, yeah, I would have bought the whole set. Um, but in the end, I, I, I feel like I built, I built them up slowly and then I finally went and was a completist and had to get all the colors. <laughs> I just had to. And I, I do use a lot of them. I would say there's the grays I don't use as much. Um, one of the blues, I, I, I still go and use those quite a bit. One of the green families, but the rest I will go and they, they all have a turn. You know, they don't get left out. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm liking the light. I think I'm gonna blend this out a little bit right here. Maybe with a little bit of the darker orange here. I got this word script that I don't want to ruin. So I think I'm actually going to wipe this off quite a bit. See if I can get this blend in. I have a, a newer soft tool and I'm going to just rub it in right here. And that's going to allow it to blend in and not go over anymore. So that text is really staying there because I used that alcohol on that lower la layer. It was shocking, but it worked. Okay. And then I'm gonna take this beautiful ultramarine blue. God, I have them all over here. Got all the shades. You know, I'm actually gonna use the one that's up here. This is the shade. And I'm gonna come up here. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. I think you guys can see the difference and why it was worth taking the time for that. I like those scribble lines. I can always put a few more back in. I'm gonna smooth this out right here. Okay, so the face, a little more highlight in there. Always put more saturation back in if you feel like the highlight was too much. Okay. I also, I don't know if you guys noticed, I did it off camera, but I moved this around and I showed you guys that big change and it really set it off having the hope over onto the shoulder. So I did move that over. So don't think you're going, you know, like that looks a little different. I did change this before we went on here and I've already showed how I went in and did that in the last video, so I didn't want to take time today and do that. Um, but that's the cool thing. You get to make changes until your heart's content. Well, you really do. So, oh, hey, Cameron, welcome. That's my husband, he's here. 
Thank you. I'm so glad you're able to pop in real quick. We have 16 of you. That's awesome. I'm really excited. I know this is a weird time slot of the day. I've been him hawing over it, but it's really hard for me to do anything later. Um, so I'm just going with this 130. And we'll just see how it evolves. But, you know, being able to watch the replay is really makes it where I could do whatever time works for me. And um, I'm not really an evening person who likes to work and create in the evening anymore. So I like to get my work because I'm full time. I work full time here in my studio. And um, sometimes I can work a little too much. And so I'm really, I'm going to put these dots back in. I'm going to put some magenta in here. And so working full time, I'm just trying to find a balance. So I'm bringing, the reason why I'm covering up some of this is I need to bring up the value a little bit and it's not enough layering. And you don't know that. And I stepped back from it last week and I mean uh, on Tuesday and I was like, you know, I really want to bring that back up a little bit. So I'm curious um, to like, are there any specific challenges that you're facing with pastel or pan pastel work? And, um, and if you need any advice or tips on anything like that. So feel free to ask those questions. Um, I'm definitely, it will even help me choose to make a video or a topic in the future if I can't answer it all today, but. That's, that's great, Patricia. Any watch time, watching the earlier ones definitely helps me out. And, I'm, and then you'll be able to see it from the beginning too. And I appreciate the watch time. So that would be awesome. I want to put a few greens in here up in this. That's a little too bright. I like to mix my greens up. I think that's interesting. And... I, I like to put them together in interesting ways that, that I'm trying to keep it dark, so I'm keeping that up here. And then I'm going to start bringing the pencils back in. I'm going to go do the dark ultramarine. I had a lady who, go, who was like, oh my God, she's a pastel artist too, and she saw that these were standing up. and. I, and she goes, oh my gosh, my heart skipped a beat seeing those up on a, on the easel like that. And I, and I joked back to her, I said, no pan pastels were harmed in this process. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I'm like, it's okay. They're, they're just fine. They're, they're glued, they're taped up on there. And th these um, plastic clamshells that they come with are really handy. I highly suggest the clamshells. Um, I personally keep them in there and stack them. I don't have them all loose and out because when I grip into them, I don't want them to move. So. Hi, Liz. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, late getting here. Well, there's, you didn't miss much. You can definitely uh, see the beginning. I've basically just explained that I'm moving forward and you guys can see what it looks like from this stage versus where I started. Some people thought I was finished. And I was going to um, finish this on my own and I thought, well, why not just continue it in this live stream? I'm starting to get my own rhythm down, figuring out how I want this to go. So what do you guys think about this circle down here? Do you think it's taking away from everything? Do you think I should tone it down? I'm really curious to what your initial thoughts are. For me, I'm trying, if, for composition, I am trying to keep people into the composition. That's what you're trying to do. So sometimes I'm like, maybe I should tone this one down, maybe even put it as a, a dark um, turquoise. No, nope, this is phalo green, but I could do that. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Is there a big difference between 600 grade to the 800 grade? Dreamweaver, that is a great question. Great question. 
the the 800 grade i i bought one just to test it out um you get where your tooth will fill up a little more than being on the 600. so you know i really don't see the benefit of going there yet because i'm i like to layer so i think you would just try that out and do personal preference because i personally like to be able to layer and i found the happy medium for these um, soft tools so I feel like the, um, I found the paper grade that works really well, you know, like I don't have to go. I did buy one and I, I don't even think I've done a full painting on it. I did play with it, but. Oops, I've been clipping them in the clamshells to my easel, but they aren't taped in. What tape do you use? Double sided tape. No, I, I have them clipped with this. You can see the clip on the um you can see these on the palette those are some industrial clips that i have and then i just tape down with just some regular tape on the edge that is more for you guys so you're not seeing it jiggle if it's not jiggling you don't have anything to worry about i i'm just taping the edge down on my easel um, so i don't have to worry about it you know i have enough jiggling this was a watercolor easel so i got enough shaking going on and so I'm just supporting it. Okay. I think the red takes away from the rest. Maybe another color peg. All right, Genevieve. I think the red dot is a little bright for not having a recognizable shape. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking about making that change. And then for the, those of you who are just joining and didn't watch the first um, one, I can either erase, which I don't mind doing when it's a, a color that, um, it's filling a whole spot, but you can just see how easy it is to make changes. No jiggle here. Well, not on my easel anyway. <laughs> okay, Laura. Having them up on your easel, I love it, and it's teaching me to really learn what colors I'm using most, you know, a lot. Like, I re would really love, you know, this would be kind of cool. Here's like a dream. Is if Golden would like let me have like my, for pan pastel, would let me have like Dawn's colors. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. You know, I gotta manifest this stuff, right? And so I'm trying to come down with like what my t top 20 colors are. And I also want to do a video that, um, that goes over those colors because I'm, I'm starting to try to narrow them down. And um, I think that would be a lot of fun to be able to, to really work from 20. But when you have them all, I just don't see the, sense of stressing out and trying to mix them when I don't need to mix them. So let's see here. I'm amazed that hardly any are teaching whimsical art. And piano. Yeah, Patricia, that um, I appreciate that. Um, it's one reason why I've moved to YouTube. I, I do feel I'm unique in, in my style and what I teach. Um, a lot of that is just me having my backgrounds in um, graphic design, digital scrapbooking, rubber stamping, art journaling, mixed media. I did watercolor. I've, I've just done all these things. And pan pastel, I really try to look through the lens of a mixed media artist, even though I'm just using pastel. So I'm trying to do all of the things that I love to do with all of those things I've done. And I think that's the file system you build up. And I really haven't seen a lot of people out there like that. And I love that. Um, I'm sure more people will, will start branching out with pan pastel, but, um, I have noticed like Jason Morgan, he's a wildlife. He's one of the first people I saw on YouTube using, um, pan pastel. And, um, most of the people are realism, figurative, like the portraits, will be very um, traditional. I think traditional is the word. Okay, you guys, so what color do you think I should put in here? Are you thinking about maybe this ultramarine or this phthalo green? Why don't you guys pick which one you think? So Dreamweaver, I, I think that you wouldn't be disappointed, especially if 
you're learning and you're just using mainly the pan pastel on the 800, it's going to be great. Um, I'm also going to be teaching a lesson of using, of changing the ivory. I think the ivory you can get because I'm noticing international people can't get the, um, they can't get the, the 600 in the dark. So I'm thinking that um, I'm going to show a video on how to make your own dark paper out of the ivory 600. And I mean, basically, I'm just going to put down a whole layer of, of black pan pastel, nice layer of it, spray it with fixative, and then put down another layer of black pan pastel and spray that with fixative. And what that fixative does is it just pushes it into the tooth. And I think you'll have plenty of tooths to work with. And I'm going to go on that adventure for a YouTube video. So I'm thinking of doing that. Um, okay, Phalo, we got two votes for Phalo. I'm going in, I'm going in with a Phalo. Phalo green is beautiful. What are you guys thinking? I think I like that a lot better. I can even see it on camera now. Your eye doesn't go there as much anymore. It really keeps you in that sweet spot where we're bouncing in between these elements here. Okay. Awesome, I'm glad you guys like that. I have a few spots here. I'm gonna go a little bit darker right here. I'm bringing up the values. Uh, I'm pushing back the values actually. Okay, and then I can take some of this. When you push back a value, I can then put some of this back over and it'll still look saturated and have that mark making in there, but I, I pushed it back a little bit. And I'm gonna use this, my favorite color. Now this is an example of one of the pan pastels that I would not want to always mix from the magenta. So it's the magenta family, this is the core magenta, and this is the magenta extra dark. I use it all the time. There's no way I'm gonna to wanna to mix that onto the, onto the um, paper all the time. And so, that's the hard thing about like going, okay, well, if I tell you guys to go buy all of the core colors, there's still those individuals that um, I would say there's probably a couple extra darks and then the rest go to shade. So um, I, I'm, I'm playing around, but that is a, a definite one that would stay in my palette. I love that color. It's my, it's my ultra, ultra favorite. So now that I brought that back, you can see how I'm layering back up with some more mark making here. And I can even take this um, magenta extra dark and I can make the patterns into, you know, just starting to fluff those colors around and, and adding to the mark making. And like I said before, you really can't go and start abstract later in the painting. It, you have to start putting, you have to put some, that's why I use that black as a guide, just to scribble on there, break things up. Um, you have to start earlier and, and really sit through that uncomfortable moment. I'm gonna put a little bit, I really liked this part peeking out being black. So I'm gonna wiggle that back and forth here. That usually takes a little bit of I use a lighter wand when I'm trying to make a lighter transition. It's 
So these are those subtle, I love details. I like to incorporate moments of detail in my work. Some of it's meditative, but I, I'm not after perfection. So I, I like to have these little moments of um, going back and forth and adding little details. But I also know that this will pay off. I was sitting there going, you know, I really liked how that was dark right there. I also have my black pencil. I organized my pencil, you guys. My head was down for like over half the time searching for pencils last time. It was crazy. Let's see. Um, how do you feel about the difference? Oh, wait, wait. I got a few questions up here. Oh, I'm so glad you like it, Genevieve. Thank you for the wow. <laughs> Maybe add some diary like to it. Okay, I don't know what that is, Peg. If you could expand on that, that would be great. How do you feel about the difference between textural fixative versus the workable fixative when making the light paper dark? Um, I never do textural fixative. If I use any fixative, um, I'm using just a, um, pan, pa a pastel fixative. And when I'm showing this fixative, I'm going to say this in one thing too, because I always have to remind people, I do not use fixative to finish my piece. I don't. We are talking about making a paper with black on the bottom and finishing some of that black, fixating the black on the lower layers. Things on lower layers, they have a place for fixative in my, in, in my personal like uh, creative process. Some people will use it during and, and at the end and um, for me this paper provides enough grip that I don't need fixative on the end and, and fixative will knock down your whites. So you can always always test it out and stuff like that. But yeah th this fixative for like the low level of changing an ivory paper to the dark like we were talking about um, I would I would do that. A workable fixative you could try it. Um, Try it on a small piece, you know, like do a, don't do a huge piece of paper. Try something small, work it up. That's what I was going to do. And then I was going to make a video about it. So let's see. Oh, hi, Kathy. Welcome. Welcome. You're on your husband's YouTube. No problem. I, I will try to remember um, your name, that it's Kathy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying the, the pan pastel art. Thank you so much. Temple, welcome back. It's been so nice. I think you've been to almost every one of my lives and I really appreciate your support. Um, internet issues. Yeah, that, that can be frustrating. I definitely had some of that in the beginning with this whole, uh, doing the live streaming. Okay. So we put some of that in there and then I have a few spots in here that needs some color. So I'm gonna start, I feel like I got all my values where I want them this time. Um, I'm gonna play around with the pencils. Let's see where we're at. We're at 213. So at 213, I can't believe it's 213 already, you guys. How did that happen? How did that happen? Well, at least I got organized pastel pencils. That's, that's a plus for me here. So I won't be head down most of the time. So, um, I'm gonna add a little bit more around here, right where these transitions are. And um, I've stacked some things on top of each other. And so it's gonna make a little bit more sense. Now you guys remind me if the stick, the other time I had it all in the way and the camera was focusing on it, I was like, oh no, um, trying not to. So what I'm doing here is I'm making that reflection connect with the hair and getting rid of that line and then that's gonna look a, a lot more natural. I do love the geisha vibe that you were talking about. I don't remember who said that. I'd have to look back in chat, but I really like that. And you can even take this and add some lines here. I'm gonna add a little bit of it up in here. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, and then put a little bit of room here and that'll blend in a little bit when I put another pencil back there.
And then I always like to tap some in over here. So this is where I'm focusing on all these lines. I, I like them to peak, but I'm also going to... These pencils are like, if you want to have this free vibe of, you know, mark making and everything, the pencils are a must. And I wrote in there that the Carbothellos, you can buy the biggest set that you can afford. Totally worth it. I don't really feel like the grays, like when the sets go above, I think 34 or 38, you get a lot more grays. Just really look at it. Um, I don't really think I use those grays that much. I don't know if they're really worth the extra money for that. Um, they usually just stay in my drawer unless I was doing a specific, you know, value study. You could do that with the grays. Um, let's see here. Dreamweaver. That was me with, the, oh yes, you had, I love the, the geisha. Now that you've said geisha, it's totally had an, another like um, vibe for me. I'm loving that. So I'm going to bring down a little bit of that yellow to harmonize an orange in this really fun area where I have, I'll make sure I'm not in frame there, where I have um, this little collage of goodness of abstract. And then bring in some of this yellow here. And that's going to bring our eye throughout. See, and you guys thought I was done. I, I could keep going. <laughs> I could keep going. That's the fun thing, though. I mean, why would we want this to end? It's just... I'm not really one that's rushing through to, to, to go on to the next piece. I think it's because I've just found that vibe that I really am loving. And so when I get to this stage, I, I would be happy if it just went on. And I think that's why I, I, I was like, Dawn, the piece I'm going to work on here in a few minutes, I was like, why did I start such a big piece? You know, it was, it's huge. But I think sometimes... You just got to go for it and go big. I'm in the process of selecting the extra Carbothello open stock to buy to add in my 24 set. Yeah, I think that's that's really worth the time to go through and log what colors you have and then just get what you need because they're so cheap. I mean, they're under $2 for the pencil, so... I think that's um, that's really worth it. On the big telly, this piece is so vivid and stunning. Well, thank you. You must have a very well calibrated TV. <laughs> like everything's different. All the monitors are different and all of that. So that's really fun that you're watching it on your big TV. Um, when Cameron and I did that, we were just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy how big you are. I'm going to lean into that. This is an arm. Kind of like... Doing those lines there. Okay, and I'm trying to actually put back some of the pencils in the spot that I used them in. So going really light can offer some really beautiful, I would say really beautiful transitions and textures um, I would say if the, one of the biggest things I've struggled with with pastel is not using so much on like going so hard on it, you know, like sometimes I feel like I put too much on my, on, on at a time and then I'm pushing away and back and forth and I'm struggling a little bit with it and I've learned less is more with some things, not all things. Now I'm just going around and supporting some of these colors. I have some gaps here. Whoops. So these are Karen Dash. Um, Karen Dash and I, they're beautiful, but I, I'm a little hard handed, like I just said, and I break these tips. I don't know if some of my Karen Dash got dropped, 
but um, I, I have um, this brass sharpener that I use because I don't like to break the tips and you just have to change these out quite often. But um, this has worked well for me. The, the cranks that are suggested, I find just use up too much of the pigment and, and the wood. A lot of them will sharpen down really low. And so you just have to get, be able to get these re replaceable blades. But I have to almost um, trim these down with, a, with an X-Acto knife. So it can be a little challenging. Peg's also watching on the big screen TV. It's great to see everything. You guys are awesome. That's so funny. I, um, I'm glad I had that experience so I can, I can relate with what you're saying. Uh, my husband and I, we were, we were laughing. We we're like, man, you are big on the screen. <laughs> Hi, Ellen. Welcome. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Your art is amazing, beautiful. I'm sad that I'm late, but I've been watching your replies. Ellen, I am so glad you're here today. Thank you so much for popping in. You know what? This time slot isn't gonna work for everybody, but what's cool is you came in and said hi, and I'm, I'm glad you're watching the replays. That really helps support my channel, and um, it helps keep me going here, because I definitely wanna build it up, so I'm glad you're enjoying that. Okay, and I had some dots over here I wanna put back. I found my magenta pen, uh, pencil I was looking for. Let's see if this one's bright enough though. Yeah, it's up there. So I hope you guys will come away just seeing whatever structure you make, you can just abstract and mark make and have a really good time and also incorporate the values. It's, it really helps you just focus. I think that was the hardest thing. You know, I didn't have a lot of videos to watch or anything when I started Pan Pastel. I remember Lori and I, we were just trying to find anything. And um, I discovered the UART paper through a traditional pastel artist. Um, I think you guys have seen him, Alan Picard. I don't, I think his name's pronounced Alan, but he, I think he's doing a portrait week. Um, if you like uh, really some cool portrait uh, work he, he's um, but he's mostly into sticks but um, he was the one I originally like he's been doing this for so many years and I found something like I think it was about 10 years ago a video in my local library and um, I, I saw that he was using this UART paper and then I decided to try it all right you guys I'm gonna start wrapping it up here because it's 222 but you can see that I can just keep going but this is how I rainbow things out though I get these cool little moments towards the end these moments aren't aren't um there at the in the middle and the beginning you, you have to do a lot of this pattern making oh I like that I like that um I have to do this pattern making towards the end it just doesn't work other, otherwise. And you just get the hang of it. You just gotta show up and... I'm glad I kept the hair. I don't know why I second guessed it, but you just gotta stick with something. I'm really loving, loving it. I'm really loving this. I, I probably could stop using it, but I'm really loving the magenta today. It's all about the pink. It's really popping some things out. I'm gonna go down here and put some green in. Got those together. I gotta put another color in. I'm gonna go with a dark in the phalo. Well, I actually think this is in the um, permanent green family. I'm gonna put some of this in.
Ooh, Lori, Lori, Lori. I'm loving that. She's an artist with a palette. See, I would have never seen that. Dude, that is so cool. Thank you, Lori. Lori, we're like sisters, man. She, she, uh, <laughs> yeah, she always sees things that I don't normally see. And 25 years is a long time knowing someone. Templemore, I think I would enjoy the mark making with a good break after the first life. Yeah, like, like doing this in two stages really helps. Like I really don't necessarily like finishing a whole piece in one sitting because you need to take that break and sit, sit away and then come back. Like I wouldn't have done half of this stuff at the end of the last live. Number one, I'm a little tired. I'm in a whole different vibe. And um, so you just, you got to break things up. Sometimes it's worse just, you know, two hours is a lot of continuous painting. So. Especially if you're learning something new too. This burnt sand of uh, pencils. I love tying those in. And... All right. I think this is calling me to do some some darker blues here. I think this is the one. Let's see. So you can see why I just love this stage. I think I'm gonna... These are those little touches that you wouldn't have done if you didn't take the time, you know? Paula, I'm getting new colors delivered tomorrow. What kind of colors are you getting, Paula? Are they pan pastels? Are they pencils? Okay, I think I'm gonna, well, I think I'm gonna go with the darker. I mean, it's lit, so I'm torn a little bit right here. I'll use this magenta right here. I just wanna make this line not be as black. And then I'm gonna go back and forth here. I'm getting close. I'm slowing down. All right, let's see. Dreamer, I do have another question. Have you tried black chalk paint on watercolor paper, then use pan pastel pencils? And if so, how did you find the layering? Well, let me shift, let me like do something similar what I've done. I have a free lesson. I'm gonna do a little pitch here. If you haven't joined it yet, I have a free pan pastel lesson membership area on my website. I have more free lessons there. I, I do keep some unique things in there that aren't on YouTube. And the cool thing is they're all in one place. Now, one of the lessons there is the mu whimsical mushroom le uh, lesson that I show you how to create your own sanded pastel paper. 
and I did a lot of testing before that and I actually show I paint the the um, I think I use cardstock on that one I paint it black and then I use a clear gesso over it you can use clear gesso you can use a pan a pastel ground um, those two really work great I haven't really used chalk paint I, I just would have to test that out but what I've noticed is you don't get to do the pencils with the details and the real fine scribbles you don't get that it's too coarse um, this sanded paper is really fine um, it's like even finer than an emery board it's um, so you just you can't replicate that I haven't been able to on making your own um, you can get the vibe you can um, like I show you the mushroom you can definitely use pan pastel on it okay but you don't get as many layers so it's definitely I, I would try it out and you can see if, if it works for your creative process like some people love pastel matte but a lot of times when people are using pastel matte they really have a plan of what they're going to do they're a, you know more of a real realism a wildlife um, fine portraits um, but the only paper I have found that can take the erasing and the layering and then also go really fine with these pencils on here like really fine I can make the the, the softest little line is this sanded um, UART paper I've worked with some I found a German paper that worked I, I can't pronounce the name but um, I found it in like a art store and that didn't take change as well so um, like with this you art paper you can even do watercolor underpaintings there is a little bit of warping on it um, you can do uh, alcohol underpaintings it just takes a lot more wear and tear so if I didn't use this paper I would not be able to do the style that I do I wouldn't be able to to do my creative process the way I want it and I'm trying to find something that gives me a mixed media vibe I want something I can layer. I want something I can erase. That's what I want and that's what makes me excited. So, you know, we all have to find what's gonna work for, for us. So what do you guys think? Should I call her done? I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna pop in a few little tension points with the um, black. Little spots that might need a little extra black support. This is a great time even to put some black dots and some mark making. You can even do more lines and mess it up. Okay. I hope that answered your question. Let's see here. Francine, Tony, Francine, Tony. I don't know if your first name is Tony or I'm going to call you Francine. Hello, my first time here for the live, not usually home at this hour. I've been watching the replays and I've been following you for some time. So excited to be here. Well, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here, Francine. And I'm glad that you can come to an actual live. Uh, we have 19 people here. That's really exciting. I mean, for 1.30, 2.30 in the afternoon, that's where I live. I'm Pacific Standard Time. That's really awesome for, for starting out. So I'm sure this channel will grow and we'll get more people in here. But this is a great managing pace for me. All right. Well, as I see it, I am thinking this is done. How are you guys thinking about it? Is there anything you see that you feel that's off? But for me, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I could keep going, I mean, okay. I think I'll just have to invest in some then. I think the paper is very important when it comes to the style you're trying. Thank you for that. Yeah, the paper is very important. That's why I want to do the, I know almost everybody can get it in ivory. And so that's why I want to uh, do a make your own dark paper. I'm also going to be teaching a few things with the ivory paper. I do a lot of rainbow abstracts that I find leans really into the ivory really well. The other thing with ivory paper, um, when I do my whimsical um, portraits, 
which I'm hoping to do a class on down the road here after my one I'm working on, um, you, you can keep that luminosity into the face a little bit more and you're not fighting against it. But you know, there, there, I, I feel it works the dark. I just love the dark and you don't have to put all your darks in. And so that's what you have to reverse when you're on the ivory. So stick a fork in it and call it done, says Paula. Right on, I like that. Looks awesome, love the layers, I'm loving it. Thank you so much. I think it's perfect, but I do so love to watch you tweak and tell, tell your heart's content. Well, I'm really excited because I'm, I'm working on the, um, the grow piece today. That's a personal piece that I started a while back. And um, I was like, for these lives to be something I can do every week, I gotta work on my, my own personal um, I'm thinking one day a week, I'm just gonna work on my own personal pieces. So I'm gonna transition over here. It's just gonna take a moment. Feel free to stretch. I'm gonna be right um, back here. It only takes me about two minutes to do the transition. So I'm gonna transition into that here real quick. Laura, I'm glad you think it's perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm getting better at this. Every week I feel like I'm Okay, this one is huge. I'm hoping I can sneak it on here without it. I have to bury some of the bottom. All right. Have my little list here. Last time I did this, I didn't even have my ethernet cable plugged in and I was like, oh my gosh, I got to write myself a list. All right. So I'm going to back out a little bit on this. I could even work on it close up. I don't, I could work on a section, but I really want to do these dark bottom here. I'll fix the palette in just a second. Is that, oh, it's a piece of tape. Well, I had to learn a lot of tech, you guys. I, I, I pride myself in like, oh, I'm gonna stick up, I'm gonna keep up with this the older that I get, but um, I had to learn this whole software program to do this. It's not just straight live streaming. Um, okay, I think I got us transitioned. Maybe that was like a record so far. Um, let's see, I don't want to be too much in the frame. Let's make sure it's focused here. Okay, let me get my chat here so I can see you. I have you up on my phone. Okay. Now, Laura, you really um, hit the nail on the head with the vibe for this piece when you were on here uh, last week when I was working on it. And um, that just really like, I just love when people like connect through art. It's probably one of the most powerful things you can do. And when people like, I go through my own doubting process on this journey myself. And I usually do very happy things. I mean, not all the time, but it's, this one had a little solemnness to it, but you know, it is painful growing sometimes, even if it's a good grow, you know, it's like, um, it's still uncomfortable. Like I, I would say, you know, to be completely transparent, I'm really loving, we, you guys have to tell me if I have pan, uh, pastel on my face. So I have to do a check real quick. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm doing okay. Um, I got a wet rag here just in case, but um, yeah, you know, through even doing this live, you know, I'm going outside my comfort zone and I'm growing and it's interesting how I'm finding my work always seems to parallel with me and it's uncomfortable, but I want to live life. I want to not have regrets and this is something I really wanted to do and I'm, I'm really excited. I'm stretching myself to do it. So I have my Wolf Carbon Pencil. That's what I use to draw in a lot of my um, permanent pieces that I want on the lower layers. So 
I'm looking for my eraser here. I have stashed it. I usually keep it in my little tray. I might have to grab another one. Oh, here it is. These little nubs. There, I've, I've been listing the erasers. These are the vanish erasers I get from Jerry's Artorama. I cut them up and I do all kinds of things with them. But um, they're my favorite. I just, they work really well with this paper. And I was thinking of adding some more of these um, little like leave branchy things. I love these things. And so I'm just gonna, I don't need them to be perfect. And that's what I've been liking is not making them perfect. And then I have the little, a little, I'm gonna erase this one and put the daisy back in. I'm gonna have to paint around that. So I think I'm gonna leave that as I paint around it. Cause I have some more daisies I wanna put in here. And then maybe just some. Okay. Let's see if we have any questions. I'm so excited. I love this one. It makes me happy and weepy. Oh, I love that, Laura. Thank you so much. Gosh, I just love this piece. I'm a bit mushroom obsessed. The deep, the deep colors are just gorgeous. And that is what the black paper does. It really helps you push back your darks and, and then you're bringing it out magically from the dark paper. And that's what you got to learn about, you know, doing the layers um, is, you know, just learning to layer up and, and bring that out. It takes a little bit of patience, but um, it's pretty magical. And I always call when I'm on the first layer and I'm putting down my first layers of colors, I always just, I'm blocking in. So um, these colors can even change, you know, they're not permanent or anything like that. And, you know, I'm just trying to build some structure to play around, you know. Um, Temple Moore. Yes, those uncomfortable things for me are the ones that have carried me the most joy and fulfillment. 100%. Um, my husband and I, we were just having that conversation last night and I was like, you know, I have my moments and I'm second guessing myself or, you know, being hard on, on something. And I, and I was just finally, I just like, you know what? I'm just uncomfortable. And, you know, that's even with learning in the art. Like, like people call... Um, some of these stages, the ugly stage. And I'm really trying to reframework that because that can be really negative. And I like to really go into the positive um, whenever I can. And um, the one thing I found is, is I, I'm starting to call it the uncomfortable stage because that's basically what's going on. You're just uncomfortable. And what I have found for myself is... Um, I consider myself an intuitive painter. Um, I really like to tap into my intuition and really learn how to let it guide me and trust it. And 99% of the time, whatever I'm working on is worked out. And sometimes the parts that I'm most, um, I'm going to make sure I'm not blocking that right down here. Uh, sometimes the most uncomfortable moments are when we're going to have a breakthrough. And so what I've realized when I'm really uncomfortable a lot or I'm having a lot of anxiety or something like that or something's really challenging for me with my art, a couple weeks later or a week later, I'll be like, oh my gosh, that was a breakthrough. So I'm learning to see the patterns in myself in my art and I still go through them, you know, like I still... I'm having to navigate that. But I think that is part of growing. You know, I mean, the one thing, you know, this might surprise you, I like to be transparent about it. Like I, I turned 51 years old and ever since I've gotten older, my goal is to um, constantly grow and learn and not get stagnant. Um, I have people I know in my life that aren't totally stretching themselves a lot and 
and doing that and I've watched people and I'm, I'm like, I, I just have to keep pushing myself because you know that growing and that uncomfortableness is, is what keeps us young, you know, like um, Lori and I, who's in the chat here, I don't know if she's still there, but I, she might be working on something. Um, l one thing about me, an unknown fact, is that I'm, I love to game. I'm a gamer. I'm on Xbox twice a week. Lori and I, we play Destiny. And um, Destiny is one of my favorite games. And we do that um, all the time together. And, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, talk about stretching yourself. I started probably playing that when I was 45. And now I'm like, it keeps you young. I got to know the whole culture. I wanted to be on there for my son because I didn't know what he was being exposed to. And I wanted to be in these chats and I learned all about clans. I was actually in a clan. It's crazy. I, I'm into a whole nother like alter ego. I play that and I play Baldur's Gate. It's um, how I decompress and it's totally different from my day-to-day -day life. So let's see, making sure I'm with you. I'm glad I've got, I got 18 of you guys here. I'm so stoked, yay. This is awesome. So you can see I'm building up this green in, in the lower levels. I'm keeping them pretty dark and um, I don't want to have them be too light because I want all of my light to be here. So I'm just filling in some of these blank areas and I'm not trying to be perfect because I really don't want I don't want it to be, and I don't want it to be a lot of details here because that will take your eye there. And so I've already, I've always put my darks down first. So that will help push these back. I was thinking about the ideas of putting some mist in here, but I think that might be a little too much. Um, so I'm just going to go and put this green in here and I'm really... Love it. I'm going to put some daisies right here too, but I'm going to fill this in. I totally see all this. Con oh, I, I missed some chat. I didn't. So I'm not realizing that the um, arrow was down. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I think it's perfect, but I do still love to watch Twitter. Oh, maybe I scrolled up. It's perfect. Okay. Yeah, I've gotten one. Okay. Yeah, I've gotten the when will you be satisfied comment. Likely never. I, I don't, I don't think we ever get it done. Um, Temple. I, I don't, I think we just expand. And every time we reach a goal, we're going to always have something. I don't think we ever get it finished. And if you do have it where it's finished, then I think you're not growing. And, and um, we're all on our own personal journeys. But um, for me, I just have to keep telling myself I'm never going to get it done. <laughs> I'm just going to keep expanding and keep growing. And that's what I want to do into my 60s and 70s and, and so forth. So I love the idea of a few fireflies around her. Um, th oh, thank you for sharing. I turned 52 last month, Jamie. Yeah, you know, we, we got to, I'm like, how young are you? I'm, I'm 51 young, right? Like we got to repackage that stuff. Like I think our parents' generation and all that are, you know, I think they got that wrong and we need to change it by, you know, how young are you? Because it's really just in our head, like how, how um, young we are and, and what we're doing to grow. Okay, let's see. I like the idea of a few fireflies too. I'll have to think about that. I think the daisies are going to be what's going to carry this around a little bit. Um, I have plans to put a few more of the daisies up, up in here and maybe knock a few in the back, but I like the firefly idea too. I'm working on shrubbery and ferns too. I like yours. Well, thank you. I have, uh, it's taken me some time to figure out my own jam with, with, um, foliage in the, the, um, the class I'm working on, I'm preparing right now. It's going to have a lot of 
foliage and all of those kinds of goodness in there. If I give you a little hint, I almost have the line art finished. My son turns 41 tomorrow. I was extremely precocious child when I had him in kindergarten. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe you have a son that's 41. That's amazing. Gosh, kindergarten, I remember I was like, that was crazy with my kids. I have two boys. Um, one is uh, 19 and he's out of school. He's working full time. And then I have a 16-year-old um, who will be 17 here in July. Okay, so I feel like I've put quite a bit. I got, I'm really liking this messy look and I might go take and put some sticks in here a little bit down the road. And I'm gonna probably put back in some of the um, stems. I'm like this is the blurry background. My um, pan uh, soft tools don't last too long being white. That's just how I roll. I I have to really if I if I go really light and I'm working on the face, I'll have to switch and um, to another wand. Okay, I really love this diarolide. You just, it just, it's a little brighter. So I'll put it up here on some of these edges that might be catching the light. Diarolide is like one of my favorite. It's a yellow green, but mixed into these teals and turquoises, it's just yummy. Did you ever try Golden's Mica Micas Iron Oxide on watercolor paper as a base for pan pastels? Okay, so initially when I started all of this, I, I was a watercolor artist. I did that for 10 years and I was like, oh my gosh, I can use this over my watercolor. Um, I haven't used that exact product that you've had. I would try it. Um, I... I've heard, you know, you can take that watercolor and then you can go over it with the um, the clear gesso or the pastel ground. I water it down a bit, like the um, I, I water down. But see, I would probably put, I don't know, I'd play with like a, a workable fit, protect it in some way and then put down another layer. Like you can fix watercolor and then I might put a layer of the ground on or whatever you're working with and then play with that. You just don't get the pencil detail as much, but you just build up those layers and it gets creamy and smooth once you build up and fill up that tooth. A lot of it's just having the patience to fill up the tooth, but I've, a lot of people will use watercolor as an underpainting on the UART paper. And um, what they do is they do the watercolor underpainting and then a lot of those artists are using sticks, but you can use pan pastel over that. And um, the UART takes the watercolor pretty well. I'm gonna, that's what I do my abstract work on. I might try to do one of those down the road. Um, it's a really fun mixed media vibe. I mean, a lot of the artists that are out there that are traditional artists use watercolor as an underpainting or they use alcohol that's been spritzed. And um, it's just the thing with the watercolor underpainting that I find a little challenging is I like to make changes. So if I'm on an ivory paper doing a watercolor underpainting, it really leans into like landscape and you have to go with the flow. You can't erase that anymore. You can't, you can't go back, needless to say. So um, I find doing the watercolor underpainting a little challenging in that way because I, I always want to push and pull and go back and forth and that's just how I roll and I find that for me that's where my joy is so I have to really let go if I do that. All right I'm really enjoying that. I feel like I got quite a bit of the basin. Let's see what time I have. Oh I have some good time here. I might be able to get into the face. Let's see here. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let me go look. I got a mirror in here. I'm so glad. Oh my goodness, you guys are awesome. I knew I was gonna do these lives and have pastel on my face because I scratch my face all the time. Thank you so much. See, I probably had it on for a while. Laura, you're awesome. <laughs> are you in the United States, Laura? I'm just curious. Peg, you have pastel. Thank you, you guys are all so nice. <laughs> um, Francine, wonderful Laura, I wish you much success. Let me see, what were you? Laura Meyer. Oh, I have some more stuff in here. Jamie, thank you for sharing. Okay, congrats. Laura's 58 years young. That's awesome. Um, I got sidetracked with that. Congrats, Jamie. I'm beyond 52 and I appreciate being a part of any community where age is celebrated. Right on. Yeah, we got to celebrate this stuff. You know what? I'm just getting started, people. Like I'm 51 and I keep telling everyone around me, like my parents slowed down. And I, I'm just getting started. Like, I can't wait. Like, I feel like this is the best mindset you can be in. Like, who wants to, I don't want to go redo the younger years in my mindset. Um, okay, Laura, I just started small business and we're in the process of building a freestanding studio. I'm 65, retired educator and lifelong learner. Right on, Laura. That's awesome. Congratulations on your building you a freestanding studio. What's freestanding? Is that like, like a kit? Like, so it's like a she shed type thing where it's separate from the house. I'm curious about that. Um, Lori, I have used the iron oxide. It's fun, but it doesn't hold as many layers. Plus it, it adds sparkles. See, Lori has touched everything. <laughs> oh yeah. She's in the watercolor right now. She goes in between watercolor and pastel. Um, she's an amazing uh, journaler, Bert. She loves birding. Um, pastel, is, is the pastel gone, you guys? Is it still there? Let me see. No, I think it's gone. I think we're good. Um, thanks so much. Yes, CT. Thank you, Lori. That's awesome, you guys. I'm, I'm stoked that you guys are in chat. This is really fun. Okay, now I'm really loving this. Now that I brought the green in, like, how are you guys feeling about it? Like, I am like, woo, -hoo -hoo. this, this makes me happy. This really makes me happy. So I'm going to build up a little bit on these wings since I have a dark thing. Chris, Chrisella, Chrisella, welcome Chrisella. I'm late. I don't have all the pan pastels, but I have many. I haven't used them yet. Bought the bought a few years of your classes and love that you're on YouTube. New to art. You'll be 57 in a couple weeks. Happy early birthday, Chrisella. Thanks for um, meeting up with me here. And that's awesome. You've taken some of my classes. I'm really excited to be on here. This is an awesome way to connect. I've been wanting to connect. It's really strange because I've been doing um, classes for a few years now. And... Um, it's, I did, well, before that I did auctions. I, I did um, auctions for my artwork and that was a lot of fun. And I missed that connection because we were all chatting with each other and, and um, chat and everything. And I just really miss um, having that with people. So this is my element. I, I'm thrilled to be on here. I've always admired people on YouTube. Never in a million years thought I would be live streaming on YouTube. Now, if you guys have watched some of the earlier replays, my first replay was the birds that I did announced. And my brother came, and most of you might already know this if you were at that one or watched it, but my brother is the one who got me to do this. He's 11 years younger than me, and he is, I'm gonna make sure I'm, I'm realizing I'm not, I'm covering it up a little bit. And he um, inspired me to do this. He, he's definitely a techie. And I, I can't express how grateful I am that I went for it. It really, it really pinged me. I was like, this is what I want to do. I think I'll move this over a hair. Let's see how that works. There we go. And then I can step to the side a little bit more. I'm realizing I'm covering up why I'm working and I'm sorry about that. I did not realize, you know what? I might put a little bit of that orange right here. Okay, we got a few more questions. 
Yes, like a she shed, I put tons of windows and a dormer for lots of light. It has a screen porch for creativity without bugs. We have a bison ranch across the road. That's crazy. That's so cool. Ellen was there. You were at one of my first ones. Um, Laura, that is amazing. I'm so excited for you. If I had to redo and like, you know, we've always thought about maybe getting some land and having like that type of, um, where we, where we have a smaller, my, my husband's obsessed with tiny houses, but I don't think it's really going to happen for us, <laughs> but he watches them all the time on YouTube. And, um, I don't know if we could ever fit into a tiny house, but I was like, if I do that, I want like a separate she shed <laughs> because I have to have my art. At least I know what supplies I would bring. I still have a lot of my mixed media supplies, but, um, it's not crazy like I have gotten rid of a few things but I do hold on to a lot of my art journaling all my watercolor um, I still have some acrylics because I still dapple in some of that because you can do watercolor underpaintings with pastel like I was saying so I'm getting to a spot here where um, I'll probably put some texture into the wings I'm getting up to the spot where I want to eventually put some pencils in and um, I've done that a little bit on the mushrooms and um, a little bit on the face. And so I'm just bringing everything up. I kind of want this wing to be a little bit more neutral and I'm trying to think. I have these neutral colors. This is the yellow ochre, extra dark. I might put a little bit more of that in here. And see, that's in the same family of the yellow ochre. Oh, but it's yellow oxide now, people. I keep forgetting. <laughs> they changed it. Golden's gonna, I'm gonna have a hard time remembering. And then I also was putting in, I love this extra dark, um, the turquoise extra dark. But you can see how I'm using them. Like if I told you just to get, oh, whoops, I'm gonna have to come over here and fix this for a sec. If I just told you guys to buy the core set to get started, you, you can totally get away with it. But I, I'm showing you here how the extra dark, having that ready and not having to mix it with black saves me time. And so you're constantly dipping in to your palette because you're not wanting to have mix those. So for those of you who haven't watched my um, replays yet, uh, I do talk about the pan pastel and how it's structured. It's each color has a core and um, that core color, you can mix white into it to become a tint and you can mix black into it to create the shade. And then you can mix more black to create the extra dark. So that's how they're, they're structured. How are we doing? A tiny house just for my art supplies. That is so true. So true. Oh, oh, Cameron is listening. I thought he was in some meetings, so I didn't know if he was going to listen to that. Wait, Chrisella, thanks for the birthday wishes. Have watched the classes, but not busted out the pastels yet. Intimidated, but looking forward to it. You know, Chrisella, watching, I recommend for everyone when they're taking, my, my classes are a lot deeper. And definitely if you want to get deep, more deeper into my process and into my work, a class is a way to go. Um, I tell them, watch the whole thing. We can only take so much in. And so when you're watching them first, you're processing things that um, are, are really important and it'll help you when you're actually going in into um, trying the class. But don't be intimidated. Definitely, you know, and also the paper is not precious, especially if you can get the UART, you can always erase. If you practice on it and you don't like it, I've erased whole pieces before and that will not waste the paper. And you know, practicing is not a waste either. It's part of the process. And I definitely would practice using the supplies that are for the class. And here's my theory on that. If when I run out, when, okay, here's one. When I run out of this um, raw umber, I celebrate. I'm like, right on, Dawn, you used all of that raw umber. That took time. That took showing up. That took really 
showing up for yourself. And I celebrate for that. Let's, let's flip that whole lack of like, if I'm using this product up, when have we ever really like gone to the bottom of a tube or had to replenish a supply? I would say this is the first medium that I've ever used things up. And I try to, um, if you bought 10 sheets of UART paper and you're, you know, nervous about using them, you, you gotta, you got, it was worth not going on some other paper that can only take one or two layers and you're struggling, that's not fun learning. So I definitely suggest using what you, um, the supplies and then celebrating if you've used them all up. If you've used all 10 paper, pieces of paper, man, you gotta, even if it's for practice stuff and you didn't like it, I highly doubt you'd get to 10 and not like something. I mean, that would be hard, but let's see here. I love that tiny house for just my art supplies. Cameron says, I need one, a tiny house or a small trailer. I know he really want that. He watches all the YouTube, all the YouTube. I'm like, do we want to use all our jelly beans to, to make, to be making the trailer? But you know, we probably will someday. Laura says at Cameron, my studio is 12 by 20 with a four foot porch. It's a good side size for Dawn's studio. Oh, I love that. Lori, my studio is a 20 by 20 um, house, one big room, and it's delightful. You guys, her and I, when she first moved into that house, her business name is called Glitterfoot Studio on um, Etsy. Uh, she sells cards on there, all of that. Uh, her and I, we put her whole floor. Do I have it here? I have it right here. I'll show you. I have it, Lori. Here I am. We did her whole floor in glitter, in glitter. It's, it's, it's crazy. Let's see, you can probably see it. Yeah. So that was a, we had glitter coming out of our hair for weeks, I swear. That was the, it's the coolest floor though. Her whole floor is glitter, like 20 foot by 20 feet. Like, holy cow, she gets some amazing ideas, I tell you. Okay, let's see here. I feel like I got this wing. I, I'm kind of liking it neutral and subdued here. And then this one's a little highlighted in the art, in the light, I mean. That's a great philosopher. I'm such a miser with my supplies. Yeah, I, I have so many supplies that have gone to waste because I, I did not want to use them up. I mean, I have a whole bunch of hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of acrylics. Um, I have sold some of them to a resale shop that, that was helpful. But um, yeah, it's just really hard to hold on to some of that. I'm going to fix this little spot right here. So it's 307. I think I'm going to move to the face and um, play around with that for a little bit. 19 people here. I'm so excited. You guys are awesome. Okay. If I miss something in chat and you guys have noticed I missed it in chat, please don't hesitate to repeat it because um, I'm, I'm just learning how to keep up and balance all that. So um, I think I've gotten everybody's questions and comments. At Laura Myers, do you have enough space for the full set of Pampas? She has so many art supplies, you guys. They yeah, had that girl. Um, she could probably host us all there and we, we would have a great time. Yep, she says yes, okay. Um, the other thing is they actually go bad if you don't use them, so use them up 100%. Temple Moore, you have some really great, well, thank you, Temple. I really appreciate that. You know, I'm here to inspire some of that stuff I've gone through myself. It's, it's um, you know, I was doing watercolor for about 10 years and um, I could never really lean fully into the medium. That's just not, it was so push and pull. I, I really liked it. I still love it. I still love watercolor. But when I got into pan pastels and soft pastels, because pan pastel is the brand. It is a soft pastel. It's in the soft pastel family, just to make that clear. Um, but it, um, when, I, when I started working with this medium, I just, it's the first medium I don't feel restricted in. I, I feel really unleashed. I feel like I can do all the things that I was wanting to do in mixed media with the pan pastel. 
It just, I had to get over this fear. I call it, I'm demystifying pastel. And it's, a lot of people are in fear that it's just gonna float off the page, that it's not permanent. It's one of the most archival mediums out there because you're actually painting with pure, almost pure pigment. A stick has a lot more binder in it. Um, so you're dealing with, that's what keeps them together. And these are just ultra fine because you're not necessarily dealing with all of the, the binder. So pan, um, my goal is to really demystify it and get more people to try it because it's just, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful medium. And the other thing is I will have to frame this. I get asked this so much about fix it of you guys and I get it. I mean, people are nervous and there's a lot of artists. I was just watching an artist last night. She was putting fixative on hers and it can really knock down all these whites in my work. When you use a, a, a paper that's sanded that really holds on and grips to the, even if, even if I'm doing, um, on a light, like not sanded paper, I will just shake it off and then just frame it. I, I, it does need to be framed. You have, if you can get over that it has to be framed, but you have to frame watercolor. You have to frame some of those others. So, um, once I've kind of gotten over that, I feel, you know, home free. So I really like the pink under that wing. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, Lori, I've been kept collecting for 30 years. Yes. You've been, we've both been collecting for so long. You got a few years on me. Hit the like button. Help me out. You guys, that's awesome. Thank you. Dreamweaver. I really appreciate it. I, I said this a little earlier, but, um, if you watch these lives, um, a lot of times we forget to go and hit the like button. I didn't really, you know, I said, I'm never going to be saying hit the like and hit subscribe, but I'm building up this channel and the more, um, it gets seen, that would be awesome. And the more watch time I get, then I'll be able to have these fun features and chat. And so any help watching, liking, commenting, even if you just, um, have subscribed, you can just like, uh, type in subscribed as a comment. That would be awesome. So any help would be great. I would really appreciate it. I forget to self promote like that in the last, all the other videos. And I'm like, I didn't want to be one of those asking for that. But now that I'm on YouTube and I'm a, a YouTuber, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I get it now. I get it because it does have a, an algorithm that's different. Um, it will uh, put it out to more people if it, if people are engaging with it. So. That would be awesome. Thank you, Temple, for giving me a little shout out there. I really appreciate it. Um, let's see. You guys are awesome. I love oil paints, but it's such a hassle to set up, break down. I will always keep them. Pan pastels feels like powdered oils in the way to go down and blend. 100%. I would think this, if you're into oils or you have tapped into oils at all, um, to my knowledge, from what I've heard, that's probably the only medium I haven't touched. I was in the fiber art. I've been into all, all types of art. Um, oils was the one I haven't touched. And, um, that's what I've heard that you just have the blendability. And I even think it goes a step farther. I think you have the blendability and you also have where you don't have to wait for things to dry. I can show up. And that's one of my email addresses, the art, um, um, show up for art. And, um, I can show up for five minutes and have that goal every day. Like, I'm just going to touch the canvas. I have to show up. That's my goal, you know, and I don't have to, this is all here. I just start. I mean, what medium can you do that in? You, you really can't do that in all the other mediums. So, okay. I know I, I said I was going to go to the face. I'm going to do that a little bit today. I'm going to switch my tool. See here, I got my little stash, find one that's light. And I'm gonna use this one. And I'm going to flip my microfiber that I'm wiping off on. Oh, you guys are awesome. Now, you know in the comments too, it's like in the comments of the actual video that is an awesome place to put subscribed to. So that would be awesome. I, this is the live chat. I didn't know the difference, but the live chat is separate from the actual comments. So any, um, actual comments after would be awesome too. That would be great. 
Cameron, you're so cute. I love that. Thank you, Francine. Thank you, Paula. Um, thank you, Ellen. Peg, happy Tuesdays and Thursdays. I hit the like button. You guys are awesome. Um, Francine, oh wait. Francine, it's the perfect medium. It really is. I, I, I think the only thing I could say, if you did a pro and, oh, I was going to work on the face. I got to remember. If you did a pro and a con list, I think the only thing that would be the con is the um, having to frame it. But it's really not a con once you get over framing. And I think it was Laura. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. She bought the spacers and wants to learn how to frame them. I am seriously considering framing the, um, the bird. I showed this in the last one, but I'm just going to remind you guys. The bird we did from the last week's lives. I'm going to try to make a video showing me how I frame it. Not, I, I have a video um, that I had made up of just showing a DIY easy one. These frames I do get from a framer. I have them custom done, but it'll still give you the idea of the whole process. And um, I'm going to try to make a frame like that. I think that would be a fun video. What do you guys think of how I frame? Let's see here. Okay, I'm working on the face, you guys. I'm going to play around here and see where I want that to go. One of the biggest tips I can give with faces, if I was to give a main tip takeaway today, and I exaggerate because that's who I am, but if I have burnt sienna, you're not going to want to use just burnt sienna, you know, that cream, this color as a skin tone all throughout. You want to mix in multi-tones of colors and values. And that's what makes skin tones interesting. If you just use one color and one tone of that color, you will have, um, it will look very flat. So adding in multiple colors, you can still do the blending and all of that, but adding multiple colors allows you not to have a flat looking face with no interest, but it's all personal preference. Um, okay. Oh, we got yeses. We got yeses for the frame framing class. I'm excited about that. Um, oh, I love how you guys know each other. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Peg. That's cool. Pretty much follow you everywhere. I always like you're awesome, Laura. Thank you so much. All the commenting and the liking and the subscribing is just awesome. Um, frame. Yes. Okay. Yes. So do Okay, so do you frame everything you make or do you have some other way of storing practice pieces? I've been putting them in those plastic portfolios that are like large photo albums. Okay, there is an, art, uh, an artist, um, I'm trying to think of her name, all of a sudden I can't think of it. I think it's, um, oh, I can't think of a name. She's, one of, she's a stick pastel artist. She puts them in those portfolios. I think Bethany, she's a um, landscape, amazing, amazing artist too in landscape. She does sticks, but um, she, I don't, I think it was Karen Magolis. Karen Magolis has some great YouTubes on um, sticks, abstract florals. She puts all of hers, I think, in the, the um, plastic frame, uh, like a three ring binder for practice stuff. I basically, you guys, I just put it all in between glassine. Um, I, I take a big piece of glassy and I fold it in half. I have a video on YouTube about caring for your pastel painting. And I was also in my free, uh, my free pastel membership area on my website. If you haven't joined that, go join that. It's really cool in there. I have a lot, all of it in one spot. I'm also going to be releasing a new class in there for free coming up this next month. And, um, but I have that, uh, how to care for it. And it talks about taking a piece of glassine. I put it in between that and then I store it in between cardboard. I will stack those glassines all the way up. So I just kind of do that. I don't really dig through them much. So it's um, stored in there. I also sell a lot of my pieces. So like that bird, once I have that framed, I'll be putting it in my shop. And, um, I've been selling those on my website for quite a few years. I 
I don't want to get rid of this part in here. I might have to go back and forth, but I love that part in there, but I might have to go back and forth on it because it's just not going to. Doing faces are definitely a give and take. And I'm still blocking in and going back and forth because I want colors to show, shine through. Okay. Oh, I wanted to say too, I don't frame everything I make. So um, the small, I do the four by four minis and then I do my five by tens. I have those frames custom done and then um, I sell those on my website. And then anything like this, like this grow, I will, um, I will sell flat and then I sell pastel um, care instructions with it that tell you everything about how to frame it, what, um, how, what you gotta do, how to store it. It's all uh, set up, it's in between glassine and between cardboard. And um, I sell them flat because framing anything larger than my five by tens would be really hard to ship and then having to deal with glass. So I, I don't, <laughs> and you know, I've been doing that for years. I've been selling them flat for years and a lot of framers um, do fine because I, I send along a, a pastel care sheet. I, I think that saved my butt. Like so many times because a lot of framers like at um, some of the big box stores, uh, craft stores uh, particularly, they want to spray. They want to spray it with fixative like after it's all done. And I'm like, no, 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 don't let them do it. And one lady was like, they tried to talk me into spraying fixative. I told them no. And I was like, I'm so glad you did because you would have had a whole different painting when it was done. Um, so yeah. Let's see where we're at here. Awesome, Ellen. Oh, you joined the, the free pastel area. That's awesome. That's what I'm thinking you're saying. Yes to framing video. I thought I'd taken all your free stuff on your website, but I'll check. So Francine, this is a new free area that I just did this last month. And um, it's a membership area. So I'm constantly updating that area so you can have access. It's just like a classroom area, but it's for free. And then you can access those classes anytime and they don't move. I'm just adding to it constantly. And I try to put in my newsletter. So if you're not subscribed to my newsletter and you're interested in getting notified on that type of stuff, I definitely would, subs um, when you go get into the free pastel area, you're subscribed to my newsletter. So you'll get in that loop and um, I'm trying to put everything in there together. So, um, cause I have another free lesson coming out here soon. Let's see. I join. I have acid free tracing paper pads to slide the paintings in between sheets and clip them. But that works too. That works just fine. Even if you have tracing paper, honestly. I mean, when you're painting yourself and you're just starting, unless you're full on selling your, um, it's fine just to put tracing. Tracing paper will pick up more though. It will pick up more of the pastel onto the, uh, Sides. Oh, and here's a tip, you guys, because I don't tell this one a lot because it's hard for me to remember. But when you put your pastels in between the paper or even a plastic sleeve, you pull it out, take a microfiber cloth or paper towel, you just wipe off the paper, um, the, the tracing paper, the glassing or whatever, and then you put it back in again because it will halo on there. And it just wipes off and then I restore it back if I'm showing somebody or anything like that. So that's a good tip to remember. The one thing with the plastic, it's a little more staticky. Like I personally don't go that way because I don't want to put my stuff in the, um, with the plastic with the static. But um, so that's why I choose to store everything in between the glassine. Um, tracing paper. Yes to your website. Awesome. Okay, you guys are doing great. So I'm got a few more minutes here, but you know, I've actually been able to work on this one quite a bit. I think if I don't have it done next, um, next week, I think I'm going to save it and maybe finish it out with you guys next Thursday. And then what I can do is, is I'll start a new piece. I have these three owls that I wanted to work on, um, on my own personal thing. And I might just start another one. I don't know what I'm going to do next week because it just keeps evolving and I'm just going with the flow, you guys. I'm a big planner and that is the hardest thing with this is um, 
it's not all planned out. I can't, I gotta like lean into that uncomfortable and it's okay not to have it all planned because if you show up, it all comes together, right? Like I'm just, I'm just trusting. Trust, I'm doing the trust because I'm in this awesome creative collective energy that I am really stoked about. Ooh, I'm really digging this. I almost feel like I want this to be a moon. Maybe I need to just go a little bit whiter so it's moon reflection. And we'll see how that goes because I'm really digging the reflection on here. But I'm getting pretty close to having it develop and then I'll have the, the pencil stage. Okay, great tip. Well, you guys, I have about five minutes left. So if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to chime in. I'm really open. I love helping you guys out. Oh, I also wanted to mention in that free pastel area, number one, when you sign up for it, don't forget to confirm on your email. There's two confirmations. One's to accept email if you're interested and the other one's to get in and validate that you're going into the classroom. And then the other thing, and a lot of people forget, I put all of my class coupons for $10 off any of my classes in there. You just have to look, they're right at the top. Um, so if you are interested in, in deepening your experience with taking one of my classes, um, you can definitely use one of those coupons. Well, I am getting really excited about how this is developing. I'm excited to put some more daisies in down here. I have the body. I want to put all kinds of like really fun patterns in with the pencils. I want to put some pencils into the wings. I just, I mean, it could be like, if you really think about it, it could be close to being finished, but I like, that's part of my next layer. That's, that's the layer I'm working towards. I'm not giving that up people. Like I, I want to go and play in that. Like, look at all the light I can bring into the, isn't that crazy? This is what I love about this medium is these, the way it just goes down and puts light in like, hello. Okay, looking for last minute questions before I sign off here. I love it. I already follow you on Insta. I left a comment there. Awesome Dreamweaver, thank you so much. I don't know if your name's the same on Insta, so you can always ping me and say, this is Dreamweaver. <laughs> Francine, I've been getting your newsletter for quite some time, but apparently I need to go back and check stuff out. Thank you so much for your generous content. You are so welcome, you guys. I honestly, I, I'm looking forward to Tuesdays and Thursdays every week. This is gonna be so much fun to engage with you and make connections. And um, I'm, I'm just really honestly thrilled that you guys are here. I mean, 20 of you guys are here at 3.30 in my afternoon. I know we're from all over the world and that's what's even more exciting. We got Australia here, we got um, all over. So I'm, I'm pretty excited um, to be able to be a part of this with you guys. And um, I appreciate your support. I don't know why, but I've just been really always wanting to do night scenes. I, um, I was looking at a piece I did a while back and it was called, it was my Frida one I did a long time ago. And I, put some sunshine in it and I might do a few of those day scenes, but I've just been so into the night. So a lot of times I like, I don't, if you've noticed, I don't have like white on my palette. I do suggest white for people that are starting out for sure, because white will make all the tints and the whole, all the colors. But um, I find I use the yellow oxide tint and the raw umber tint the most. I just love them. And the reason why you go in between the tints is because they're warm and cool. And um, that's why I don't just use one tint is because I'm, creating that um, interest 
it will be flat if you use all one color. And so I'm just building up this moon. That's kind of fun. I'm really digging that. So I, I feel like those are the moments I get with pastel. Like, ooh, ah, like <laughs> when you do that to yourself and you've been painting, I've been painting using pastel for over, you know, about six, a little over six years right now. And so I, I still get really excited about it. I'm going to have to get this transition fixed, but I will work on that. All right, you guys, let's see here. I'm going to sign off here right after I answer a few of these questions. It was fun to hang out with you for a while. I'm working. Oh, I love that you worked on something too, Genevieve. That's awesome. Um, Dreamweaver, perfect timing for me. I have breakfast and now I am um, have one of your lap dogs resting in your lap. A husky, mind you. Oh my gosh. I'm actually going to go pick up my little dog, Sonny. He got his teeth cleaned today. He's a Yorkie. Um, well, he's a Chorky, a Yorkie um, Chihuahua mix. Sometimes I'll bring him on camera and you guys can see my little guy. He's pretty sweet. So I'm um, the third layer, yummy icing on the cake or donuts. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited. I'll be working on another layer here this next week. I'll save this. Thank you guys so much. I am filled with gratitude that you're here. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your questions. And I'm glad that we can experience the magic of this awesome medium together. So you guys take care. You have an amazing weekend. And I'll see you back here next Tuesday. And um, take care. All right, you guys.